All right, in this uh, video, we're going to cover uh, circular functions. Uh, we started, uh, well, we finished off in the last section where we went over uh, the unit circle and how we define the sine and the cosine. And we're going to pick it up, pick up where we left off there in terms of we're going to have a unit circle. Right, so just a refresher here. The last time we had a unit circle, that circle of radius one. And we define some point P with coordinates x, y, right? That light on the unit circle. And the cosine and the sine were was a way to relate that point x, y with an angle in standard position theta. All right, so that was the idea of the cosine and the sine, right? That was the definition of it, right? Where when we said we had the cosine of theta, that was mathematically written as cosine theta is equal to x, right? Sine of theta, mathematically, right? That sine theta, that was equal to y. Okay, <clears throat> now those are our two basic circular functions, cosine and sine, that relate that angle theta to the point x, the point p, which had the coordinates x, y. Now we're going to expand on these and introduce these new circular functions, right? But they're all based off the cosine and the sine. Right, the first one is we want to define something called the secant of theta. And this is going to be defined as secant of theta 1 over x. <clears throat> right? And again, whenever we're dividing by a variable, we always have to make sure, well, this is true as long as x is not 0. Right? Our next function is the cosecant of theta. And we're going to define this as, or we're going to write this mathematically. And this will be 1 over y. All right. And again, as always, whenever we're dividing, make sure that this is true as long as y does not equal to 0. All right. Our next circular function here is the tangent of theta. Sometimes we're in tangent theta. Okay, and we're going to define that as equal to y over x, right, as long as x is not 0. And our last of our circular functions is the cotangent of theta. And this is written cotangent theta, and this is defined as x over y, where y does not equal to zero, right? In both the tangent and the cotangent, in tangent, y is zero, that's fine. Zero divided by any number is zero. All right, for the cotangent, x can be zero, right? Zero divided by any number, whatever y is, that'll still give you a result of zero. Right, so these are our six circular functions, all right, <clears throat> and how they're related, right? It starts off with the cosine and the sine, which comes from the unit circle, and then the rest here, they're essentially just kind of reciprocals. Um, and how, that's where we're going to introduce now our using kind of the definition of the sine and the cosine are these reciprocal identities, right? And then we're going to jump into evaluating values of uh, <clears throat> cosecant and tangent and all that. All right, so this is in our textbook, Theorem 10.6. Okay, and this is called the reciprocal identities. All right, <clears throat> so secant of theta, doing some substitution, right? We called it as 1 over x, but we also, if we look up here, x is also equal to cosine of theta. 
So secant of theta is also referred to as, can also be thought of as 1 over cosine theta, right? And again, as long as cosine of theta is not 0, all right? And if it is 0, if cosine of theta does equal to 0, then the secant of theta is undefined. Okay. All right. <clears throat> okay. So our next reciprocal then in here is the cosecant of theta, right, which again we said was 1 over y. But using substitution, we saw we could say, well, this is 1 over the sine of theta. As long as sine of theta does not equal to 0. With the same stipulation here, right, if sine of theta is equal to 0, then the cosecant of theta is undefined. Okay. All right. Moving along, our next one we'll define is the tangent of theta. And again, tangent of theta we define as y over x using substitution. This is also equivalent to sine of theta over cosine of theta. Okay, and again, right, always when dividing, the denominator cannot be 0. Sine of theta, that could be 0, that's fine. But here the condition is as long as cosine of theta is not 0, right, if it is, if cosine of theta does in fact equal to 0, then tangent of theta is undefined. Okay. <clears throat> For the our last circular function here, the cotangent, right? The cotangent of theta which is x over y. And again, using substitution, cosine theta over sine theta. <clears throat> and then this, as long as sine of theta is not 0, with the same stipulation that if sine of theta is in fact 0, then the cotangent of theta is undefined. All right. Okay, so these are our six circular functions, right? Cosine, sine, secant, cosecant, tangent, cotangent. Right? So I'll be working with these extensively throughout the course, and we could see here these are how they are related, the secant, the cosecant, tangent, and the cotangent. But again, all stemming from our two original circular functions, cosine and the sine. Okay, so we call them circular functions, and we'll see later that this is just synonymous with saying these, this is trigonometry, right? These are trigonometric functions. Right? We base these on this unit circle and these functions sine and cosine. Right? <clears throat> now, um, last section, we learned how to evaluate certain angles using the unit circle, and we're going to do that now for uh, these other trig functions or circular functions. All right. So here we're going to look at evaluating our circular functions. All right, so here what I have is the unit circle, 
And one thing I just want to make clear here, when uh, when I ask you to evaluate something that is a multiple of pi over 3, or pi over 4, or pi over 6, or one of these quadrantal angles, all right, uh, I am not looking for just plugging into the calculator and give me, giving me some uh, approximation of root 2 over 2 or root 3 over 2. Right? I'm going to be looking for exact values. Right? And that means that I need to see that square root uh, in there without being uh, an approximation. All right? So that means that we need to be comfortable using the unit circle, right? which gives us right away the cosine and the sine as long as we know the reference angle. But now how do we adapt that to our other four circular functions? Right? So for instance, for this example, our next example here, Let's say I would like to evaluate cosecant of 60 degrees. OK, so <clears throat> using the property here, 1 over sine of 60 degrees. Right, so looking at my unit circle, 60 degrees, that is pi over 3. The sine is the uh, y-coordinate, so that is root 3 over 2. So this will be 1 over root 3 over 2. And, and again, this is a, a not an appropriate representation of an answer. I do not want to see uh, complex fractions. Uh, this is equivalent to saying 2 over root 3. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. All right. Now, you kind of saw my thought process that I kind of uh, wrote this out. Uh, again, in your head, you might think of it, all right, cosecant, that's 1 over sine. I know sine of 60, that's root 3 over 2. Well, let me just take the reciprocal, and you can jump to 2 over root 3. All right, I just kind of wrote step by step just so we can start seeing the, uh, the thought process that goes into evaluating something like this. All right, now our next one, let's say we wanted to evaluate... How about evaluate the secant? Let's use the right abbreviation here. The secant of 7 pi over 4. All right. Okay. So this is not in the first quadrant, so let's figure out here where we are. And again, secant is 1 over the cosine. Of 7 pi over 4. Okay. <clears throat> All right. And 7 pi over 4 is just 1 pi over 4 less than 2 pi. Pi over 4. Okay. Cosine, I know it's positive in that quadrant. And again, anything with a reference angle here of pi over 4. I can go over here and say, look at the one in the first quadrant, pi over 4, root 2 over 2. All right, and again, positive, since we're in quadrant 4, the cosine is positive there. And then reducing this is 2 over root 2, or simply square root of 2. Okay. All right. Uh, let's do one more here. Well, let's do a couple more. The next one here is 3 tangent of 3. Okay. Now, in this case here, tangent of 3, this angle, right? Remember, this is the angle, 3 radians. If I don't see the, you know, the degree uh, unit, essentially, then I assume it's radians. In radians... Right now, in this case, this is not an angle that I find in my unit circle. Right, I don't see three. Right, most of uh, all of my special angles involve pi, right, or zero, right, some kind of factor of pi. So, in that case, then, if we really do need to find what the tangent of three is, then we have no choice then to use a calculator. Mm -hmm. Now, in this case here, this is, in fact, radians. First step before uh, doing this 
is make sure you go to the mode and make sure you are in fact in radian mode, right? If you have a degree, switch over, hit enter, and change that to degree mode, right? But again, make sure you are in the proper, <clears throat> make sure you're in the proper mode for whatever it is you're asked to evaluate. Okay, so let me go over here. And again, tangent is our common function there. Three equals, right? And we get negative 0.1. Excuse just three decimal places, excuse me. Negative 142 thousandths, or proper rounding techniques, 0.143 radians. All right. Okay, now a thing about the calculator here, uh, most calculators, I believe, maybe the uh, at least the TIs, they don't have functions for uh, secant, cosecant, cotangent, right? What you see there in yellow above sine, cosine, tangent, those are inverse functions. Okay, so just keep that in mind. And we'll talk about inverses uh, later in this course, but that is not what you want if, let's say, the actual value you wanted to calculate was cotangent of 3. All right. In this case, you would use, now, from our reciprocal identities, all right, this was a <clears throat> cosine over sine, but another way to think of this is cotangent is the reciprocal of the tangent, right? Because they're just flipped, right? If we saw from our previous notes here, right, sine theta, cosine theta, those are reciprocals. So I can make the conclusion, correct conclusion here, that cotangent is simply cotangent of an angle is simply 1 over the tangent of that angle. And now you plug this into your calculator. Right, you plug in 1 divided by tangent already in radians, so I don't have to worry about that. And we get negative 7.0. One five. All right. Okay. All right, and that is how you would use a calculator to calculate the radians, right, or uh, a reciprocal one as well. Okay. So now let's take a look. One more example here. Sometimes you'll see some of the examples in the book. They're phrased in this way. Let's say I wanted to find cotangent of theta, where theta is any coterminal angle. With pi. All right. So in other words, it's asking for not just cotangent pi, sure that's one of them, but if we look at our unit circle, any coterminal angle would be pi, and if I go another 2 pi units from there, that would be 3 pi. That's also coterminal with pi, and we can also go in the negative direction, negative pi. Negative pi. All right. Okay, all of these are equivalent, and again, this is the same as saying cosine of pi over sine of pi. Right. And now looking at that, right, the cosine and the sine, those are simply the x and the y coordinates. That would be at the point negative 1 for the cosine, 0 <clears throat> for the sine, but uh-oh, we had a problem here, right? This is not possible, right? Uh, division by 0 is not defined, therefore cotangent of pi, and really any angle that is coterminal with uh, pi, in other words, 3 pi, negative pi, 5 pi, etc., is undefined. All right. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so here, we can kind of see now, based off the idea of the uh, the reference angle, that we have an extension of the uh, reference angle theorem, right, from the last section. Okay, so in the last section, we went over 
something called the reference angle theorem. And that also is going to apply to all of our circular functions. Right? So the reference, the generalized reference angle theorem, which is just a reworking of the one that involved the sine and the cosine in the previous section. Uh, the values of the circular functions of an angle, if they exist, right, as we've seen, sometimes they do not exist, are the same up to a sine of the corresponding circular functions of its reference angle. Right? More specifically, if data is a reference angle, if excuse me, if alpha is the reference angle for theta, then cosine of theta is plus or minus cosine alpha. Sine theta is equal to plus or minus sine alpha. Secant of theta is equal to plus or minus secant of alpha. And cosecant of theta is equal to plus or minus cosecant of alpha. Uh, tangent theta plus or minus tangent alpha. And finally, the cotangent of theta is equal to plus or minus the cotangent of alpha. And the choice of the plus or the minus depends on the quadrant in which the terminal side of theta lies. Okay, so let's take a look at an example here. All right, in which we use this theorem here. So let's say that here, let's move this here. So let's say we have, for these examples, I want to find all angles that satisfy the given equation. cosecant of theta is equal to negative 2. Right. Okay. And now again, one way to approach this is if we think of this as 1 over sine theta is equal to negative 2. And again, use here the reciprocal property. Right. I can always write any integer as a fraction over 1. Right. And here, I have one fraction equal to another fraction. This is equivalent to the reciprocals. Being equal to that. Okay. All right. Now, the way I like to approach these is we think, okay, so now I have sine of theta is equal to negative one half. All right. Well, I'd like to draw myself just some quadrants here to get an idea. Where is the sine of theta negative? The sine of theta is negative down here and down here. Right. And the reference angle, this is my alpha here. And this is my alpha here, right? Now, again, don't worry about the sine. Just think of it in terms of positive. I always like to reference it as what is it in the first quadrant, right? When the sine of theta is 1 half, well, that is going to correspond to pi over 6, right? So for this case, alpha is equal to pi over 6, right? Our reference angle, where we just think of it as a reference angle being, well, what angle in the first quadrant, right? So ignore the sine would give you 1 half. All right, now this does not solve it. Right? This is not theta, right? We want to find theta, right? What we found is alpha, right? Theta would be the angle in standard position. And let me change colors here. That encompasses here. But notice it actually has not just that one. It's also this angle here. Right? <clears throat> For the first one, right, that we draw here, theta would be pi plus that extra pi over 6, so theta would be equal to 5, excuse me, 7 pi over 6. But remember, these are periodic, so every 2 pi, I'll keep hitting that reference angle there, or that terminal side there. So it'll be every, excuse me, plus, my apologies for, let's start that over again, right? Theta would be equal to 7 pi over 6 plus every 2 pi k, where k is 
an element of the integers, right? Uh, this notation, the way you read that is k is an element of the integers. You can write this all out, or you can use this uh, quick and easy math notation, right? Or it's an element of. Okay, so it gives us uh, the first angle, 7 pi over 6. Now let's deal with this one. And again, when we say k is any integer, so when k is 0, right, that means 2 pi times 0 is 0. So we just get data equals to 7 pi over 6. Right, when k is, let's say, equal to 1, we get theta is equal to 7 pi over 6 plus 2 pi times 1 is just 2 pi. And again, this will be plus 2 pi is equivalent to 12 pi over 6. <clears throat> Adding that, that is 19 pi over 6. All right, so that is also a solution, right? It's coterminal with this angle, right? 19 pi, we get 12 pi, and then we go another 7 pi gets us right there. Or 7 pi over 6, I should say. Okay, so, and it, it's an integer, so k can also be negative. So when k is equal to negative 1, we see theta equals to 7 pi over 6. Uh, negative 2 pi, so we could write that as minus 2 pi. Or 7 pi over 6 minus 12 pi over 6. And that gives us negative 5 pi over 6. All right, and as we can see, uh, from standard position, negative five pi over six, that puts us right there, all right? Just under negative pi, all right? So also called terminal with that angle. So this gives us all the angles, right? Which is what we're asked, right? Simply saying seven pi over six, uh, that is not all of them. That is an angle, but not all of them, all right? And that also gives us, only gives us the one in the third quadrant. This one, all right? Similar, similar to this, we're going to have a 2 pi k, right? Because it is a, uh, <clears throat> a period, <clears throat> it is an angle that happens every 2 pi. All right, so for the second angle, theta, we'll get this angle here in standard position, the positive one, right? Not quite 2 pi or 12 pi. Remember, that's pi over 6, so theta will be 11 pi over 6 plus 2 pi k where again k is any integer, right? Uh, you must state that it's any integer and you can't just write k and then just say, all right, that is the answer because you need to be specific, right? What can k be? Can k be any real number? Can it be only positive numbers, right? So it must be any integer, right? It wouldn't work for any kind of uh, rational number, fraction, right? It must be integers. Right? And then similar to here, you could see with k, if you plug in k to be 0, 1, negative 1, or any other integer, that you'll get an angle that is coterminal with this angle. Right? So that gives us all of the angles. Right? As we could see, there are infinite many angles that satisfy this equation. Right? And one thing to also notice that we did solve this, but this indirectly solves our original problem. When does the cosecant of theta equal to negative 2, right? By applying those properties, those reciprocal properties. Okay. All right, let's try another one here. How about here? Let's see. Let's try. <clears throat> so for our second example, why don't we do a cotangent of theta equals to the square root of 3. Okay, so looking at this here, we can see, all right, let me look at the, <clears throat> my unit circle. Uh, and looking at the square root of 3, I see that pops up either when I'm dealing with a pi over 3 angle or a pi over 6. All right, now how do I know which one, right? So here we can use the fact cotangent of theta is cosine of theta over sine theta. Now, a nice way to think of this is, think of this as a, <clears throat> as a fraction, right? Root 3, right? And one thing, notice that in all of these, especially dealing with the pi over 3 or pi over 6, there is a factor of 1 half, or essentially you're dividing by 2, 
Well, one of uh, the uh, tricks that mathematicians like to use all the time is multiplying by 1, right? In this case, 1 is 1 over 2, right? We multiply the numerator and the denominator by 1 over 2. As long as it's the same number in the numerator and the denominator, then you're all good, right? Now, why would I want to write this this way? Well, now it's easy to tell, right? When is cosine of theta equal to root 3 over 2 and sine of theta equals to 1 half? Well, I could see that that occurs at pi over 6, right? But again, as always, let's be careful here, right? When is the cotangent positive, right? So when something is positive, quadrant 1 always comes into play, right? So here this will be our alpha, all right? <clears throat> but where else is it positive? If I think of it as a ratio of the cosine and the sine, well, when both cosine and the sine are positive, then cotangent is also positive. The other time where it's positive is when they're both negative, right? Because then I have a negative number over a negative number, right? And that happens here in quadrant three, right? Where this is alpha as well, right? Because when we divide in this case, negative root 3 over 2 by 1, negative 1 half, we get a positive root 3. Okay, so now we found alpha to be pi over 6. All right, and here we'll say theta is, right, the nice thing about it being in the first quadrant is the reference angle is the same as theta. So in this case, pi over 6 plus 2 pi k. All right. <clears throat> And here, again, don't forget when k is an integer, all right? But again, that is not all the angles, all right? We saw here that, let's account for this one, the angle in the third quadrant. The third quadrant is 7 pi over 6, right? 6 pi over 6, and then that extra pi over 6. Plus 2 pi k, all right? And again k is some integer. You need that, right? You need to either write this notation, right, or state k is any integer. Okay. All right. So then now these are our solutions here. Uh, one other thing to mention, I didn't mention in the other example, but uh, this can be as same as this represents an infinite number of angles. This can be represented, this isn't the only equation that works. So what I mean by that is when k is 1, Right, we found out, which is pi over 6 plus 12 pi over 6, which gives me 13 pi over 6. Uh, it would not be uh, incorrect, or another way to represent at least this part of the solution, you could also just say, oh, well, it'll be 13 pi over 6 plus 2 pi. Let's use a different letter to avoid confusion confusion here, 2 pi j, where j is an element, again, of the integers, All right? One thing to convince yourself is that both of these are actually the exact same thing, right? They represent the same solutions, all right? It's just another way of writing it. All right. All right, let's do one more example here. Our last example here is, let's take a look at solving the equation tangent of theta is equal to negative one. All right. Okay, and again, remember that tangent of theta is equivalent to sine of theta over cosine of theta. All right. And if we look at the ratio here, when do we get, and again, for now, just focus on the value one. We'll introduce what happens to how do I treat the negative here. But one way to get one is if both the numerator and the denominator were the exact same value, right? And right away, when I think of that, all right, what angle is the same? Uh, what angle gives me the same value for sine and cosine? And I could see right away that is pi over four. Right, root 2 over 2 divided by root 2 over 2 would give me 1. All right, in this case, we're looking for negative 1, but that'll be my next step. Right, how do I find that negative 1? 
right? But right away I know that for this case, alpha has to be pi over four. Okay, now in what quadrants is it negative one? Right, remember, the only way we can get a negative value is if I have alternating signs, right? Plus minus or minus plus. All right, so I'll look here. That happens in quadrant two. Right, where this is our theta. Right, and again, this is alpha. Right, where here we have the x is negative, but the y is positive. And that also happens in quadrant four. Right, and let me draw that out here. That is also theta. Right. In this case, the x is positive and the y is negative, right? But the ratio of those sine and cosine will give me a negative value. All right. So seeing this, let's go with the first one here, all right? For this one, theta would be, if this is pi all the way to the negative x-axis, you're essentially taking away a pi over 4. So that would be 3 pi over 4 plus 2 pi k, all right? And again, k is any integer. <clears throat> and again, this is alpha. One whole turn is 2 pi. So if I take away pi over 4 to give me to this terminal sign, theta would be 7 pi over 4 plus 2 pi k, where again, k is an integer. All right, and that is how you solve it. Okay, thank you.